What's the average thickness of a high-rise building's floor slash ceiling? The typical floor spacing is about 12 feet for tall buildings. The thickness ranges from 8 to 20 inches thick, depending on structural system used. It could be wood, uh, steel, and, and cement, that sort of thing. Uh, here it says 4 inches for roof slabs and other things. I'll leave a link to that. Civil sir. This one says anywhere from 12 to 14 inches in a typical home. Usually that's just wood and some other materials. Residential high-rise, 7 to 8 inch thick slabs. Offices are 10 to 10, 9 to 10 inches. Um, requirements for a parking garage for carrying housing is about a foot. So if you just round everything up to a foot or down to half a foot in thickness, that's about average, correct? And now, how high can a human being reach? That's 2100 millimeters. That metric data works out to, if you're not aware of it, around seven feet for a man standing. Women standing are slightly shorter as far as how high their hands can reach. <clears throat> and we're doing that from the practical limit for a person reaching up and grab to reach something. Useful range. What's the maximum height a human being can fall without getting injured? This is listed 20 to 25 feet. But anytime you get eight stories, 30 meters, or around 100 feet, it's 100% fatal unless something intervening happens. Now we're going to look at the free fall calculator for Earth and this universe's gravity. I'm setting it at 25 feet. That means we're talking around almost 30 miles an hour of impact with your legs absorbing the impact by falling 25 feet, let's say. So let's make that 30 feet just for entertainment purposes. <coughs> 30 feet is, well, 30 miles an hour. What about 32 feet? That's almost exactly 31 feet, excuse me, 31 miles an hour at 32 feet, which is what I was told to memorize when doing this. You may have noticed when you watch Backroom's YouTube videos that people in the backgrounds, backrooms and objects falling can fall an almost unlimited distance, which would normally achieve terminal velocity of 200 miles an hour, yet they get up from it with very little injury. Several videos you'll look at will show a person, quote-unquote, no clipping, falling between the cracks in time space or reality into the back rooms, sometimes falling very, very large distances. In almost no cases are they truly injured enough that it would affect whether or not they can get up. They seem to have little or no trouble with this. But when they fall out of the back rooms, you may have noticed that they fall from a great height up in the air and fall into what looks like a zoom in on a Google map or Earth, which is what it is. But <clears throat> when you notice this, you also notice the camera tumbling and not showing the human falling through. And when you see them bringing up after action reports saying, oh yeah, we... Uh, we found this camera. They don't ever say they find a person. They just say they find a camera that supposedly fall that has fallen a great distance, whether it's a VHS or a uh, a digital video recorder. In every single case, it's just found, and they are able to recover the information with some damage. But they're able to recognize that it was a video camera. It wasn't completely delaminated and torn apart by impact. It didn't shred or destroy the tape in most cases. <clears throat> now, what that says very clearly is that if you're falling in the back rooms, it does not have feet per second per second or meters per second per second acceleration. Gravity in the back rooms is essentially an initial speed acceleration. Let's say you're going through um, the floor in some back rooms, uh, multi-story building or one of the catacomb array, arrays of uh, puzzle areas. The floor is, in many cases, if you actually look at it, depicted as a one full second all the way down to one-tenth of a second transition from the floor they're standing on to falling through something and coming out the other side some way. Something visually changes. 
What that means is they're falling through, if you're not aware of it, almost exactly, if you can look at the time, anywhere under 15 feet of distance. Let's get it down to one-tenth of a second exactly. Yep, it's about a foot. It's a, under a foot. Let's try uh, 0.5 feet or 6 inches. Yep, there we are. So it's anywhere from 6 inches to, well, like I said, 15 feet of depth. No, 30. We're seeing in the back room's videos <clears throat> the effect that's much more like, in fact, almost identical, to someone falling through what would be a normal fall but not accelerating. That concludes our little TED Talk for the day, if you want to call it. But what that means is falling from the back rooms does not require that you accelerate to any high speed. You fall, well, effectively at a constant speed of 30 miles an hour. In fact, virtually every video I've looked up when I do the calculations frame by frame shows that you're only filing maximum 30 miles an hour, usually less than that. The usual distance drop, if we take it from a human being's body height of, we're going to call it 10 feet and round it off. You're going 17 miles an hour, 15 miles an hour, that sort of thing. And if we do the specific height of the minimum, the maximum distance you can create by standing up and putting your arms above your head and falling, the maximum traversal through the floor from your feet to your hands would work out to around a 15 mile an hour acceleration and then it would stabilize. Terminal velocity in the back rooms is 15 to 30 miles an hour maximum and that's why you can survive falling seemingly miles. And if you fall through to reality, it seems to be governed by the same rules as well. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that.